In this presentation, identify safer therapeutics with simple quantitative cell-based assays for measuring receptor internalization. I will present information about our cell-based Pathhunter receptor internalization assays. Membrane receptors in response to ligand binding can effect changes to activate signaling pathways. In this example, a GPCR receptor binds a ligand that activates the signaling pathway. But in addition, ligand binding can also have effects on receptor internalization that may have important ramifications on the cellular response from receptor signaling. Both multipass receptors, like the GPCR shown in this schematic, and single-pass membrane receptors, like receptor tyrosine kinases and immune checkpoint receptors, constitutively exhibit complicated and dynamic membrane receptor trafficking, illustrated in this figure, that can be changed by ligand receptor binding. Thus, Therapeutics that are tested only for their ability to activate downstream signaling events may exhibit differences in vivo due to other receptor activities, such as receptor internalization, which may in turn affect receptor localization that limits or enhances its signaling activity. Current techniques for visualizing receptors use fluorescent tags, probes, or antibodies to analyze internalization. Such methods for documenting receptor internalization in response to ligand receptor engagement are often cumbersome, qualitative, and not well suited to high throughput testing. In addition, receptor fusions with large fluorescent tags may affect expression and internalization, while techniques using antibodies require reagents with good specificity. Pathhunter internalization assays, in contrast, are quantitative, easy to run, and measure a gain of signal and are suitable for large-scale screening. The Pathhunter internalization assays use our patented industry-validated enzyme fragment complementation, or EFC, to detect internalization and is based on a split beta-galactosidase enzyme. The beta-galactosidase enzyme is divided into two fragments, the smaller enzyme donor fragment, shortened to ED here, and the enzyme acceptor, or EA fragment, which, com which comprises the bulk of the enzyme. Independently, the two enzyme fragments have no enzyme activity, but when combined or brought into proximity, the two fragments can complement to form a functional enzyme capable of hydrolyzing substrate to produce a, a chemiluminescent signal. The internalization assay shown here consists of a cell line expressing the EA enzyme fragment localized to the endosome and the target receptor fused at the C-terminus to the smaller ED fragment, also called prolink and shortened to PK here. When a small ligand molecule or a biologic binds the receptor, receptor internal internalization is detected when the receptor moves to the endosome and the PK and EA enzyme fragments co-localize and complement to result in a gain of signal. Because the PK enzyme can be tagged to both multi and single pass membrane receptor receptors, this assay format is universal for many classes of membrane receptors, such as GPCRs and receptor tyrosine kinases. However, there is a second receptor internalization format shown on the next slide, which specifically examines internalization of activated GPCRs. Like the more generic receptor internalization assay shown on the previous slide, the activated GPCR internalization assay shown here consists of an enzyme fragment localized to the endosome. In this case, the PK fragment is tagged to the endosome and beta restin instead of the receptor is tagged with the EA fragment. Upon GPCR activation following ligand receptor engagement, the beta restin EA fusion protein is recruited to the receptor and this complex moves to the endosome, resulting in enzyme complementation and a gain of signal. In the next part of this talk, I will describe some of the applications for the Pathhunter receptor internalization assays. Shown here is data from two different cell-based assays for the GPCR cholecystokinin A receptor. Two different ligands for the receptor were used in both assays and data from each can be compared to 
better understand the overall effects of the ligand on the receptor. In the assay on the left is data from the internalization assay, and on the right, results from the Pathhunter beta arrestin assay tested for calcium flux using calcium no wash plus reagents. By combining knowledge of how ligand or compound binding affects receptor signaling events, as well as receptor localization due to internalization, better insight can be gained into the overall ligand effects on efficacy and safety. Another application for the receptor internalization assays is for the development of antibody drug conjugates. The principle of how antibody drug conjugates works is outlined here. Antibodies for receptors targeted to specific cells are conjugated to cytotoxins, which are internalized and release the cytotoxin to kill the cell. ADCs are being developed as cancer treatments to specifically target and kill tumor cells. Pathhunter internalization assays can be used to characterize antibodies targeted for receptors, such as immuno-oncology checkpoint receptors, for their ability to activate receptor internalization. Antibodies identified as inducing high levels of internalization may serve as lead candidates for conjugation to cytotoxic compounds. Many ADCs are already in various phases of clinical trials for the treatment of cancer, and this is an active area of drug development. Here is another example of how results from both receptor signaling assays can be combined with those from receptor internalization to give a greater understanding of receptor mode of action. Four human delta opioid receptor agonists were characterized for the activation of receptor internalization on the left and for inhibition of forskolin-stimulated cyclic AMP accumulation on the right. Cells overexpressing the human delta opioid receptor in the Pathhunter activated GPCR internalization and Camp Hunter for assay formats were treated with four known agonists and assayed using Pathhunter and Hit Hunter detection reagents, respectively. For both assays, data for MET5 and Kefalin was normalized to 1 for potency and to 100% for eff efficacy. Despite similar compound potencies and efficacies for all four ligands based on the inhibition of cyclic AMP accumulation in the results on the right, SNC80, which is known as a strongly internalizing compound and functional antagonist, is clearly defined as a super agonist in this internalization assay. The super agonist effect suggests that SNC80 may lead to higher levels of internalized receptor and subsequently lower levels of receptor reserve, and thus behave as a functional antagonist. Presented here are data from two of the internalization assays for single-pass receptor tyrosine kinases. In the panel on the left, increasing concentrations of insulin result in greater amounts of insulin receptor B receptor internalization. On the right, ERB2 exhibits greater amounts of receptor internalization to the endosome when incubated with greater concentrations of a combination of two ERB2 antibodies, one of which is trastuzumab sold as Herceptin by Genentech. Robust internalization is also observed when Herceptin is used in combination with another therapeutic ERB2 antibody, Projeta, also sold by Genentech. This slide shows two internalization assays developed for immune checkpoint receptors. The CD33 internalization receptor assay shown on the left was tested with a commercial antibody to CD33. CD33 antibody was pre-incubated with a secondary antibody to cluster the CD33 receptor and then added to cells to monitor internalization. With higher cross-linked antibody concentrations, greater amounts of PK-tagged CD33 complemented EA-tagged protein localized to the endosome. A number of ADCs have already been developed for CD33, and some are currently in clinical trials for the treatment of acute myeloid leukemia. In the results shown on the right, B-cell maturation antigen, or BCMA, receptor internalization was activated with a commercial BCMA antibody. 
Several BCMA ADCs are in development as therapeutics for multiple myeloma. So to summarize, we have developed two formats of cell-based pathhunter internalization assays that use EFC technology to simplify ligand screening of internalization. These assays provide quantitative results appropriate for high throughput screening. One of the assays is a more generic format for receptor internalization and applicable to both single pass membrane receptors such as RTKs and checkpoint receptors, as well as multi-pass GPCR receptors. The other internalization assay format is specifically designed for activated GPCR receptor internalization. In both cases, the movement of the receptor or receptor complex to the endosome is measured. These receptor internalization assays can be run in parallel with the many other pathhunter assays we offer that measure receptor signaling to give a more comprehensive understanding of what happens after a ligand binds a membrane receptor, as well as direct applications for development of therapeutics such as ADCs that take advantage of antibodies that activate high levels of receptor internalization in order to deliver their cytotoxic drugs effectively and with specificity. The extensive menu we offer for GPCR assays for internalization and arrestin and second messenger formats is shown on this slide and represents only a selection of our total offering for GPCRs. Finally, listed here are some of the advantages of our Pathhunter receptor internalization assays. The use of the EFC system in the assays enables an easy and homogeneous assay format that yields rapid results with good sensitivity and robust responses. The assays are also amenable to high throughput screening for drug discovery. The results yielded from internalization also complement data from other cell-based assays that address more functional aspects of the same receptor with the same ligands. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about our receptor internalization assays, and I encourage you to visit our website for more information about our cell-based Pathhunter receptor internalization assays.